So I'm gonna show you how to brew any coffee in a French press today, but also I'll show you how to brew specifically the darker roasts because if you're a Bulletproof coffee fan, you've been using our standard Bulletproof roast, which is optimized for flavor. It's my favorite roast and this new stuff is just slightly darker but has a very different taste with more body, more chocolate notes and it's delicious, but you've gotta handle it differently. Darker roasted coffee tends to go stale more rapidly, so storage matters. A little bit more oil on the surface, so you've gotta have one of these bulletproof canisters. What's different about these is that they have an inner seal, and this inner seal does something interesting. It pushes the oxygen out. So once you open the bag of coffee that we'll send you, fresh roasted coffee, you put it in here to keep the oxygen out. When you pull it out, you hear that vacuum sound, and then your coffee is nice and fresh. What I'm gonna do here is grind some of the coffee beans. I'm gonna make three cups of coffee, so I'm going to want about a third to a half a cup of ground coffee. So I'll put just enough into the coffee grinder and we'll start grinding. When you're grinding your coffee, it's really worth your energy to spend an extra 15 or $20 on getting a coffee mill or a coffee burr grinder. This has two rotating parts that make even sized particles because when you're doing a French press, you don't wanna have what you get from one of those chopper kind of grinders, which is dust and boulders. What you want is even particle size so you get really good coffee. I did about a medium grind here. And what I'll do is I'll add the coffee to this French press here. I'm using a insulated French press. I'm gonna add about half a cup. This is a third of a cup measure. I'm gonna do exactly three cups of water. I like my coffee pretty strong. And you'll find there's reasons to make your coffee a little stronger when you're using a dark roast. And you wouldn't expect that, but that's actually how it works. One of the tricks to make your darker roast coffee taste really good is to reduce the brewing temperature. If you use a typical home brewing machine, you're never gonna get good coffee. Home brewing machines use water that's only 175 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not hot enough to get proper extraction. And then you use a paper filter and you get coffee that's always inferior. So what people normally do is they'll boil water, let it sit for 30 seconds to let the temperature drop from 212 down to about 205, down maybe 200 degrees. And then you take that and you use it to brew your coffee. In fact, I use a digital temperature controller. You can buy special kettles with this built in. This is a piece of laboratory equipment because, well, I'm in a coffee lab. And you can see I've got about 198 degrees here. And when you're roasting darker coffee, you get a more fragile and more porous coffee bean. And that means that you want to be able to brew it at more around 195, 196 degrees. So for these darker roasts, I like 195. I've set the temperature controller here to be around 195, 196. For you, all you have to do is boil the water and then let it sit for about a minute to a minute and a half before you brew your French press coffee. I've already added the beans here. My water's at the right temperature. I'm gonna add three cups of water. I know that's three cups because there's markings inside the French press. And now the important thing. I'm going to start a stopwatch. It takes four minutes for normal coffee in a French press. But because we're dealing with a darker roast, you might wanna add 30 extra seconds to get more of the flavor out. Because I mentioned the beans are less dense because they've been more roasted. So to get more of the flavor out, a little bit of extra time can make a huge difference. The other thing you really wanna do, add about 10, maybe even 20% more coffee than you would normally use with a lighter roast in order to get the flavor you want. The other thing that makes a huge difference when you're doing this, there's huge debate in the coffee community, honestly, it doesn't matter that much, about do you break the crust on your French press? And what happened here is when you add the hot water, the coffee floats to the top and forms a crust. My answer is yes, I like to break the crust. I stir it a few times so the coffee has a chance to settle to the bottom. I'll go ahead and do that right now. You don't wanna abuse the coffee and you don't wanna shred it, so I'm just gonna stir it until the coffee has a chance to settle to the bottom, which is, which is really nice. There is a difference in flavor. You get less extraction if you leave the coffee on top. 
If you abuse the coffee by stirring it really aggressively for a long time, you'll get too much extraction. You'll get bitter oils in it. And using your phone as a stopwatch is a really good idea. Most people who make French press slosh some water in there, look at it, wait 30 seconds, go, I really want my coffee, and then they drink it, and they're not getting the flavor they could possibly get. The other thing that's gonna make a huge difference for you is after your coffee is brewed for four and a half minutes, and this coffee is almost ready to be pressed, you wanna drink your coffee in smaller doses, and I'll explain that for you in a second once I grab a cup. It's been four and a half minutes. I used about a half a cup of ground coffee for three cups of water. This might be more than you'd expect. You normally wanna do about two tablespoons of coffee for six to eight ounces of water. We were taught during World War II to like weak coffee so the coffee companies could extend the supply, but it tastes a lot better if you use more coffee. You'll see the difference right away. It's one of the simplest things you can do to improve your cup. So what I'm gonna do here is press out the coffee here. This is a special double filter press, which is kind of cool because it will actually uh, micro filter the coffee so you never get any of the grounds that would come through in a normal French press. It also means you have to press pretty hard. One thing, if you press your coffee all the way down in a French press, it'll oftentimes leak around the edges. So you don't have to plunge it really hard the way I just did. I was just pushing the micro filter through. And instead of pouring a full cup of coffee the way I normally would, I'm gonna pour a half a cup of coffee. And the reason here is that in this insulated press, it's sealed. There's no oxygen getting into it, and this coffee is going to stay fresh. If I leave it percolating for too long, sitting in there, it'll be a problem. I could decant it if I wanted to, but if I have a choice between putting the coffee all in this cup or leaving some in here, I'm going to pour it out of here later, and it's going to taste better because with a medium roast coffee, like the normal Bulletproof Original Roast, the flavor evolves in the cup over time. With a darker roast, you get lots of bold chocolate notes, but over time, the flavor degrades. So drink a half a cup of coffee, refill and drink another half a cup of coffee, it's gonna be really good. You can take this coffee and you can blend the right amount of it in with your brain octane oil. You can blend it in with your grass-fed butter the way you do to make official Bulletproof coffee. We've optimized this roast and we've tasted it and we've tested it specifically with brain octane and butter so it tastes right. A lot of darker roasts taste awful when you put butter and brain octane in them. And that's because those bitter oils come through in a way that makes you go, ugh. I've had some really unpleasant experiences during the testing process where we try it, it tastes really good in a cup, and then we try it with butter, it's like, oh, that's not right. So this stuff tastes really, really smooth and creamy without the bitterness that comes from the wrong brew or from the wrong roast. And it's smooth, it's bold, it's chocolatey, like it, it smells right. Like this is a really good cup of coffee. And this is how you brew it. This is how a French press works. It's that straightforward. So to recap this for you, keep your dark roast in an airtight container. The Bulletproof Airscape container is designed specifically to pull the oxygen away so you don't lose freshness. You wanna brew it at a slightly lower temperature, around 195. Oil the water, let it sit for a minute and a half, you're good to go. And drink it a half a cup at a time. You can blend it all with your butter and coffee, but keep it in a carafe and then just pour yourself the right amount and enjoy. Dark roasts have very different flavor profiles. You'll still feel good because these are bulletproof processed beans. They do not have the mold toxins. They are not fermented. We put in infrastructure in Colombia and Guatemala for you so that you can have that clean, amazing feeling that comes from coffee without all the other stuff in it. Enjoy.